So this lesson really doesn't specifically focus on polynomial functions. This is something that we need to just um, add to our skill set. So we've learned how to state intervals using uh, set builder notation, which you do in, uh, when you state the domain and range of a function in grade 11. But we're going to add on top of uh, our skill set, like I said, instead of just working with set builder notation, we're going to use number lines as well as interval notation to help us state uh, intervals. Uh, in fact, I would argue uh, you would fall in love with uh, interval notation because it's so handy and so uh, uh, efficient. So before I uh, teach you how to state intervals using a number line and using interval notation, I'm just going to refresh your memory uh, with the inequality symbols. So greater than symbol, greater than or equal to symbol, symbol, less than symbol, less than or equal to symbol. Okay, so set builder notation says if x is less than or equal to negative 4. Okay, so if you use a number line, then it's going to look like this. So less than or equal to negative 4. I'm going to do a closed circle at negative 4 because it's inclusive of negative 4. All right. And then you want to highlight anything that's less than negative 4 as well because it's less than or equal to negative 4. What if it was just less than negative 4? Well, if it's just less than negative 4, you don't want to include negative 4. So instead of using a closed circle, what we're going to do is we're going to use an open circle. But we're going to do the same when we highlight the rest of or anything less than negative 4. Okay x is greater than or equal to 3, so 3 let's say is right here, close circle, anything greater than that, beautiful. If it was just greater than 3, so open circle at 3, let's try again, greater than 3, okay, close circle, uh, yeah, so open circle and then anything greater than 3. All right, here it's saying x is greater than or equal to negative 4, and simultaneously it's less than or equal to 3. So basically we're saying it's uh, anything from negative 4 to 3. So negative 4, 3, so include the endpoints. Okay, include both endpoints. So closed circle, closed circle. But well, if you don't include either endpoints, so then you'd have open circle on both sides. Uh, negative four to three, but include negative four, but don't include three. So it's partially open or semi-opened interval, semi-open interval. Oops, include negative 4, but not 3. Okay, you might be looking at this and you're like, well, I, will, I won't use a number line very often. But I will argue the number line will be uh, helpful later on in the course or for some questions um, in ch uh, chapter 3, some questions in chapter 7. It's just really nice because it gives you a visual. Um, so uh, it might be a little tedious and time consuming to create the number line, but uh, it does give you a very nice visual. Okay, let's see with this one. X is less than or equal to negative 4 or X is greater than or equal to 3. So let's see. So less than or equal to negative 4 or greater than or equal to 3. So include negative 4 and include 3. Okay, pretty straightforward. And then last two, we have x is less than negative 4. So don't include negative 4. Don't include negative 4, but do include 3. And what about all real numbers? If it was all real numbers, let me just fix this, sorry. If it was all real numbers, what should we do? 
I know it seems tedious, but guess what? We're going to highlight the entire number line. Okay, beautiful. All right. So what about interval notation? Okay, so we said this one is the most concise. Let's try. If x is less than uh, or equal to negative 4, what you can say is, if you look at this number line, you're including any number less than or equal to negative 4. So interval notation works by basically going with a smaller number to the bigger number. So left to right on the number line. So what's the smaller number here? Or, hmm, how about negative infinity, right? Now, we want to include the endpoint here. We want to include negative 4, okay? So smaller to bigger, and we want to include negative 4. So we're going to put a square bracket here, okay? And around infinity, you can't include infinity. There's no limit. There's no ending to uh, infinity or negative infinity. It's unbounded, so to speak. So we always have a round bracket here. So square bracket when you want to include the endpoint, and uh, so square when you want to include it, and round when you don't. And around infinity and negative infinity, it must be a round bracket because you can't close it off. Numbers never end. Okay. So here you have same idea: negative infinity to negative four. But this time we're going to use a round bracket because we don't we don't want to include negative four as a part of our interval. Uh, I do want to mention for number lines, there are some other notations that uh, people use. So for example, some people put square brackets on the number line, um, but I don't see that as often. I mostly see, see people doing a filled in circles. But don't be surprised if you do see square and round brackets. They mean basically what we're trying to say here. Okay, uh, x is greater than or equal to three. So x is an element of, oops, square bracket because we want to include the endpoint we want to include three okay beautiful okay and the next one you don't want to include three so round bracket all right and the next one negative four to three include both negative four and three uh, negative four to three don't include either so round brackets Okay, open interval, and then here semi-open. So include negative four, but don't include three. Okay, over here. Now here, be careful. If you look at the number line, you see these two intervals, they're not joined. Okay, there's a gap in between them. So we call this to be disjointed. Okay, so really you can't state these values that are highlighted on the number line using one interval. What you have to do is use two intervals so uh, less than negative four less than or equal to negative four okay you did that earlier now greater than or equal to three you did that earlier as well but we need a symbol to say x can be in this interval or in this interval and we have the symbol called the union symbol okay x can be here or here and you need that union symbol when the intervals are disjointed, which means there, there's a break in the number line. Uh, let's see, negative infinity, negative four, don't include, include three. All right, now what about all real numbers? This one seems silly. Negative infinity to infinity, okay. I want to add one question because uh, we will deal with some examples where you only want to include one value. So uh, let's say three, I want to include three and let's do zero here, negative one, open circle. So anything less than negative one or three, okay? Less than negative one or three. How do you use a, a interval notation to depict that? So neg less than negative one, that's easy. Now, how do you just depict three? How do you just say three? I want to include three as a part of my interval. 
So we use a union symbol. That's that's uh pretty we're pretty certain about that. So we're gonna use brace brackets. Okay, it's very similar to what you did uh, with domain in grade eleven, where you're just listing out numbers. So you're including three. Now some people they uh, they instead of writing just three, they write three to three. I've always thought that was very weird because uh, interval. Yeah, it just it just looks very weird because you're doing interval, um, and you're not really moving on the number line. So I've always thought this is very weird, and I found it inefficient too. So because what if I said what if I said not only am I including three, and I did four, five, six, seven, then this is very tedious. So if I did three, four, five, six, seven, it would be just three comma four comma five comma six comma seven, and then that would include those values. So I don't really prefer students writing this. So I have seen that, but uh, I find this to be much better. Anyways, so uh, this is interval notation, and this is number line. So with number lines, all you have to really say is close circle, open circle, and that will decide whether you want to include or not include the endpoint. And for interval interval notation, uh, all you have to do is a square bracket or round bracket. Now be careful around infinity and neg infinity. It has to be round because uh, it's unbounded. It, you cannot cap off numbers uh, at a certain extent. Um, and lastly, if you use brace brackets, uh, those are helpful too because they can just include single values. Okay, so now you know how to state intervals using number lines and interval notation.